Rob O'Keefe joins me now to talk a few minutes about uh, Milford TV and all he's done. How many years has it been, Rob? Well, I get hired in August of 2012, so, yeah. so around kinda, three years. Yeah, well, three years coming up on four. Yeah, three and a half. Um, you've done amazing work over there. Talk about Thank you. when the first day you walked in. What were the studios like at Milford TV? And they weren't where they are now, right? Uh, well, there was nothing. Uh, Milford TV didn't exist at all, even in a physical form. Even in we actually, when I was hired, they were still uh, debating over what the location would be. So that was kind of exciting, uh, being able to be part of that process. Where was uh, your office? Uh, so uh, actually, uh, so Mike Tempesta was on our board of directors, yeah. uh, former principal of uh, the high school, and uh, he let me kind of just set up in his office um, and kind of tinker around there, use the internet, and figure out what I needed to figure out while we were deciding where we would have the new location. Um, and that was really awesome of him. Um, he was great. Can't say enough about him. He was um, a big supporter of mine. So um, wherever he is now, I think he's in Ashland. Is he? Um, I think so. Did the Not channel? sure, but I should catch him. Because <laughs> he was a real nice guy, and he's nice to me. And sent now. him a Christmas card yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, Mike, if you're out there, thanks. Uh, he's no longer on the board, obviously. Uh, but um, when he was here, he helped me out a lot. He kind of showed me around, gave me a tour of Milford and uh, taught me a lot about the dynamics of Milford yeah and uh, but back to your question um, so just kind of set up in his office uh, got a lot of the uh, policy manual things set up um, the outlook of what we were going to do and then we got down to the nitty-gritty of um, uh, forming the uh, the agreement with um, our leaseholders for the the new location on 138 South Main Street um, in the uh, Milford Plaza there. And uh, that was great. Um, I think that was the best location out of all the locations. Also, Phyllis Ahern, a former board member, was a big part of getting that location. And I think that that is uh, a big part of our success because uh, there's so much parking there. It's visible from the street. Yeah, It's on a main road. Um, you've got a lobby. You've got a kitchen. You've got a conference room. Yep. So now people can come down and... Not just do their business there, but kind of see what you're, you know, what's happening at right. for TV. And what's nice is everyone that comes in, steps in through the doors, always says, "Oh, I didn't expect this place to be so big," and it's a, it's a great location. You think of a closet, I guess. I mean, isn't that old school community TV? Maybe yeah. in a school or in a closet somewhere. Well, uh, speaking of a closet, so even though we were, you know, right around September of 2012, they started to really build out this the new studio. Um, and at that point, we had taken over for the old Comcast studio, w which was on um, Central Street. Yeah. Um, at that point, we didn't have our programming equipment in there. We didn't have a line to to push out our programming. Oh, we wow. didn't have um, the fiber optic line set up. They were Comcast was still setting that up. Yeah. So the only place we ha we had to drop for a live signal was the high school, and it was literally a closet. So uh, we had our uh, programming equipment in there, what little of that I was able to purchase at that time because mm -hmm. we still had limited capital at that point, and we were spending all the money that we had to build out the new studio. So, you know, just a little small video server, a couple of uh, DVD players, and that's it. That's where we're getting stuff on the air. Um, and it was pretty much a mess. I mean, I was not nervous, but, you know, anxious to get into the new studio because I wasn't... <laughs> and you had in your mind, because this was still 2012, sure, not too long ago, so the technology was there, and you had in your mind what it could be, probably what it is now, and you can always keep growing, but right now, are you guys capped? I mean, it's pretty high-end at Milford TV right now. No, we're now. still building, we're still in the process of, of you know, getting settled in and, and building out and buying wow. more equipment. Because so technology is always changing. Sure, and again, I... I keep harking on this, but the agreement with the town that Jerry Moody set up and Bob Kelly from New TV uh, and the selectmen with Dino, um, they did a great job of recognizing the need and the agreement with the town and the agreement with Comcast and Verizon is just um, is really nice and provides us that, um, that money that we need, um, whether it's capital every year or the operating that we, uh, money that we receive uh, every quarter. And that comes from the town? Uh, so a budget? Uh, so we receive our, our operating money. Uh, we get 3.5% from Comcast and Verizon of their revenue every quarter. 
Um, has nothing to do with taxpayers. Yeah. Um, it's all from Comcast and Verizon. That's the agreement. Uh, so we're not using any tax money. We're not using any town money. Okay. And we actually give um, a half percent every quarter of the the monies that we receive from Comcast and Verizon to the the Milford Public Schools. Oh, great. To upgrade their video and technology departments. Because there's an educational channel that goes along with Milford TV That's as right. well. Now, most towns, uh, when you talk about public access, uh, they use the acronym PEG, PEG, uh, PEG Access. So that's Public Educational Government. That's what that stands for. Uh, we should have three stations, but there's uh, three channels. But there's a whole history of why we don't have uh, that. I'm not going to get into that now. Is the third government? It's, well, yeah, it's it, just you know, public educational public government. Education yeah. So government? right now we have a public channel and an educational okay. channel. So but I you kind do of, a lot of government on the public, right? So I kind of split it, split up the government stuff. When we go live with governmental meetings, they're live on Milford TV, but then I replay them on uh, throughout the month on the educational okay. channel. So they're being seen. Oh, absolutely, and you can see all of our stuff on our YouTube channel, yeah, My yeah, Milford great TV. You, you, yeah, My Milford TV, yep. great YouTube channel. Everything, basically everything you do on Milford TV ends up on YouTube, um, for the most part. Yeah, all of our staff-produced programming ends yeah. up on our YouTube channel, My Milford TV. All of our member-produced programming, uh, it's up to them to create their own YouTube page yep. or own website or put out their show, however and they And you'll want. share from your channel. Yeah, we YouTube can share. Channel. We'll help share and promote their shows, but our goal is to have the members make their own content, be yep. in control of their own content, and have us have our hands off of their content so that way they can share it, promote it as they wish, and really hold ownership of that content. So a lot of people don't realize that, but there are member, there's member content and then Milford TV right. content. And usually at the beginning of a show, you'll see the Milford TV logo pop up, and it's the same for every Milford TV production. Right. Uh, that's how you can differentiate the, the two. Right. We have our little bug uh, that pops up saying that this is a uh, Milford TV original production before all of our staff-produced programming. And then when, when you see a member-produced uh, program on the air, uh, that'll have a little disclaimer saying, you know, the following views do not uh, ex- uh, are not expressed oh, right. by the, uh, the board of directors, the town of Milford. It's very and necessary. Yeah. Especially very with necessary. Like the yeah. Sheedy show. Sure, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to keep our hands off as much as possible. You know, we're always going to be in the studio with the members helping, the, you know, supervising yeah. and giving them suggestions. That's what's great but, about what you guys do is right. you don't just open the door and say, we're going to lock up. You guys, we're, we're leaving. You lock up when you leave. Right. You're there to help. We're there to help. I think what's better, and you know, some people may argue with me on that, uh, on this, but I think what's better, the, the other thing we do is we, we make sure that the members are creating their own content. Yep. Uh, it's not us, the staff, hitting record and running the cameras and running the audio. The directing, it's, producing. Right, and that way people have, a, have I find, that uh, the people that are making their own shows um, hold it more dear to their, their heart or, or uh, you know, have it. It's, it's more of their own, and they take more pride in it. Right. Uh, I find that when you kind of do the work for them uh, that I've seen other stations do, uh, public access stations, when they do it that way, um, the the kind of uh, the pride falls off a little bit, and it you know sure. it, people don't stick with it yep. so much. That's what I find. You also have a stable of interns that are and volunteers that are very helpful. Sure. Oh yeah, the the volunteers are great. Uh, the interns that we get from uh, the high schools and the local colleges are are awesome too, um, and we get a lot of our programming out that way as well. The kids that you have involved, a lot of young kids. Um, talk about that a little bit because people might not realize that you also provide a service, and you may not think this, but you provide a service for kids to have something to do, to go somewhere after school. And I think it's really important um, keeping kids off the street. And I, it's, it may, that may sound a little bigger than what you think you're doing, but you're really shaping minds and giving kids something to do and teaching them a valuable you know, lesson. I sp- Not lesson, but a uh, valuable lesson. Um, uh, a trade, I, I suppose. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if that's happening, if we're helping people, uh, that's, that's how we see it from the outside. That's an offshoot. I just feel like if when I was a kid, uh, I didn't have anything like this in my town. Yeah, me neither. Uh, not not to this level. Uh, you know, there was there was some pretty good public access um, stuff on in in my town, but um, I didn't know that I could get involved. There was there was no way of for me to real for me to realize and then when I got into high school you know I got involved with the video department and that kind of helped me see that that's what I wanted to do but if I had a 
a station like this, um, with the the quality of equipment, um, I would I would have been involved immediately. The sky's the at limit a, at an earlier age too. I mean, I didn't really start realizing that I liked to work with video until maybe sophomore in high school. Yeah. And by that point, I was just kind of doing it through the the high school classes. Um, so I didn't really, and I kind of just messing around on my own at home with the vi- home video camera. So really, uh, the, the reason why we're having suge- success with these kids is because they're kids that are interested in video yeah. and film and TV. And then on their own accord, they're coming in. I gotta say, RJ was probably a big part of that, bringing ki- more kids in. Oh, sure, he's yeah. A, he was a kid himself when he started. Yeah. Now he's in college. Uh, but he was in high school, and all his friends came yep. to help him put on his show. Yep, and there's and a lot of them are still there working on the show. And I think that's something else that a lot of people don't realize is that you know RJ's by no means is a professional, uh, and the kids working on his show, and you know the young adults working on his show, are just kind of doing this as a hobby. Yeah, and every now and then they they. Kind of, you know, not every show is a is a is a hit right now, but uh, every now and then they really get everything together, and, and RJ is prepared, and they'll have a really good show. And you yeah. look at it, and you could hold it up against uh, any other local affiliate station TV show, I think, and it's it's the quality is there. I was gonna say quality wise, it's amazing because it's HD, sure, right? And um, so if you have have an HD TV, you may not be used to um, public access looking like that, but you. you switch around the channels it's popping like every other station well the uh, so on the air we have to down convert for standard definition but when you watch on youtube if you watch any of the member shows that have their their shows on youtube it's in hd yeah. so we record everything in hd but right on um and you know to jump ahead um we are looking to see what our um capabilities are going to be for for hd okay uh broadcasting in the future it's not something that we um are being provided with right now um, Comcast and Verizon is kind of holding back on that front uh, for the time being, but they they are they have some test cities out there in Massachusetts. I think there's one or two uh, that are being provided an HD signal. Um, so eventually it'll happen, but probably not till you know three five years down the road. Yeah, uh, maybe longer than that. But um, but the HD quality is there through YouTube, right? And um, yeah. wherever else you may be seeing it outside sure. of the broadcast. Yep. Uh, talk about some of your favorite uh, Milford TV produced shows that are on right now. Oh man! Well, uh, Maybe some that are personal to you or close to you. Well, I'm very proud of. Uh, if we're talking about the members, um, you know, RJ's one. Just, yeah. I mean, to see his first episode that he taped <laughs> out of a, you know, another closet at the high school, uh, and uh, to see where he's come from there, um, and to, if people would, you know, understand more that he's still learning. Sure. If, a lot of people are so hard on it. It's like, <laughs> first of all, it's it's public access. You know, yeah. take it with a grain of salt. But also, be you should also be amazed that he's been able to do this in a matter of a couple of years. Assemble a crew. Yep. I challenge anyone to try and assemble people in this day and age that will stick with you. Right. I mean, it's uh, been what did we say? Two years? It's like yeah. two years at I least. Mean, yeah. Sure. A little over two years that he's been doing this show. Yeah. And people know his name already. Yeah. It's at least uh, once a month, right? Right. And there's no budget for the show. It, it, like, no one's getting paid. <laughs> it's all just his friends. And uh, it's funny because he, he showed me a skit that he did that, that someone posted on Reddit. And uh, it's from his show. And, and I'm actually in it because I, you know, I I promised him I would do a guest skit. Oh, him. is this the one where? Uh, the Heckler thing. The Heckler, right, right. I, I saw someone, that. It, he I was there, I think, days, that day. I think it was the 50th show, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I did something special for him. <laughs> And he took that and he and he put it on YouTube and someone put it on Reddit two days ago. It has ten thousand views, <laughs> but people are tearing it apart. I saw some of the comments like, on Facebook. Oh, yeah. It's like this is not Jimmy Kimmel. This is <laughs> they were tearing you apart. Too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm like, like come on, people, <laughs> like, the kid a break. <laughs> but um, uh, but it's still you know the whole goal was is to have fun with the show, sure. and it's just funny how people are now recognizing it. And you know you're doing something right when people are tearing your that stuff is true. down. You know, yeah. if, if if you don't have haters, you're not doing anything. <laughs> That's right. So uh, I told RJ, you know, this where this is a badge of honor. Yeah. You know, you have haters now. That means you're actually uh, getting people's attention. Yeah, because if it ever goes big time, it's going to be even worse. <laughs> sure. 
I mean, just look at the celebrities that read their mean tweets. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, you, you, it comes with it. I actually told told him he should he should probably turn that into a that, like a mean tweet segment because I'm uh, sure he could yeah. find a few. Right, and people <laughs> just don't realize it. Um, this is him learning. He yeah. has to do this. You know, you you don't learn. Um, by succeeding all the time. It's, it's just, a great thing, too, impossible. because this is what he wants to do for a living. Yeah. His, his dream is to be a talk sure. show host, but if anything, he can work in that industry. I think he could do anything that his personality is so big, uh, and he is su- such a good interviewer. He's really good at, at, at just conversing with people. Yeah. I think whether it's on the radio or um, He's on fun TV. having him on the radio. I love having him yeah. on the radio. Uh, I think he could do that. Another show I'm really proud of is... Uh, Milford performs with Brian Hopkins. Yeah, that's come a long way as well. Sure. Go look at his first episode. And, Justin and, and I were on that one. Yeah. And uh, he's really uh, nailing down the, the quality of the, the audio of the performers that he's having on. Yep. Uh, he's really learned a lot about editing. Uh, he's got his own website for the show. Yep. And every month he's churning out uh, an episode that's better than the, the month yeah. previous. So My son's going to be on in March. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Brady's bringing nice. his, uh, his band down. And they'll be on. I think. I think it's the March show. That's great. Yep. Uh, another show that's great is uh, Marsha Shana Yoga. It's a yoga show. Okay, I don't know that one. Uh, Marsha Mancuso uh, produces it with her son. Yep. Uh, Marky, who's actually part of the Special Olympics and Best Buddies program. Okay. Uh, so that's really special to us. Uh, a lot of people help on on that show. Occasionally, um, Jeremy Folster, who's a one of our board of directors will will uh, he's a um, high school teacher, the video production teacher yep. at the high school will send over students to work on that show. Oh great. So that's a a big community show. We also have another show um Day Calorics. It's um it's produced by a woman named Libya Gonzalez and she's a um uh she's from Colombia and she's a she's a painter. A wonderful painter. She teaches in the local area and she's part of the Blackstone Valley Art Association. Um, she has her own show and just kind of a Bob Ross feel, but yeah. a little bit more energetic than that. Yeah. Um, she has no happy trees. Kids. Uh, she might have Ecstatic a happy tree. Trees. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colombian trees. Uh, so she's got uh, her students that come on and she teaches them how to paint. Sometimes she'll do it live. So she's come a long way with her show as well. You have a news program with Tim oh, Coed. So if we jump over to the staff produce yeah. side, um, we have. Uh, all of our staff produce programming every week. You can see the Milford Informer. It's amazing. Friday nights. Tim Coet does a great job. Uh, Tim is uh, the guy you'll hear on all the Legion baseball calls, all the high school football, yeah. uh, basketball games. Um, great play-by-play voice, professional. And every week he puts he assembles you know local community news. Um, and puts together a half-hour show of news, and it's it's great. I it, thought I was busy. I don't know how he has the time I don't know. to go out and get that news. I don't know how he does it, <laughs> and he never complains. I was telling him, we have a big screen at our house. You've seen it before, and it's in the carport. And on um, Halloween, we were watching Halloween movies, and then we put on Milford TV at the oh, end cool. of the night. We just had it rolling, and it was his Halloween edition. Yeah. And you had the big uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the skulls that was me dancing around. Holding the skull. <laughs> so, because there's Tim, who's this professional. You know, sure. he comes off very professional, and um, you could see him on like a big time news station, yep. not cracking a smile, nope. just doing his news. And there's skulls bouncing around that you were uh, a part of well it's cool about tim is that he was actually a theater major in college and then graduated college and worked in theater worked oh, on like broadway and a couple things but then he wasn't getting the jobs he wanted i don't know if he wants to tell the story but he ended <laughs> up at as the ass end of a my little pony uh <laughs> during the, the uh my little pony uh traveling no kidding theater thing and at that point he was like i'm gonna try something else <laughs> so he we went to connecticut school of broadcasting uh graduated from there and and then and then i met him when he was doing the legion games yeah and realized uh his talent and you know eventually it'd be cool to see him on like espn i think he's uh, he's right oh, up absolutely. there with all those talents um and uh, hopefully one day, being the play-by-play guy of the uh, Red Sox, <laughs> uh, I think he could do Why it. Uh, but super professional, such a nice Knows guy, his stuff. and uh, great interviewer, um, just awesome. Can't say enough about Tim. Yeah, he knew all the kids from Legion like after day one. Oh yeah. I mean, you would think he's been following. Sure. I mean, he just came into town. He was like he lived far away for a while. Yeah. And uh, he just came into town, and he just knew what we were doing here. He could call out any player's name, give the stats. Yep, he jumps right into it, and he's he's great at it. 
What were you doing before this? Uh, I was working in Marlboro. I'd worked there for seven years. I uh, Their TV station there, WMCT. Um, I had interned there in college. I was going to Worcester State and um, went to um, a Worcester State um, intern fair and met the guys there and um, realized early on that um, there was an opportunity there mm. um, and interned there, volunteered there. And then when I graduated, they gave me a job um, and worked there for seven years. And then I found out about this job here um, and went for it. Now, time to brag a little bit. Where do you think we stand with Milford TV among other cities and towns? We're pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say we were above, be humble. above average. But like I said, we still have a ways to go. We don't have all the equipment that um, I'd like to have us purchase by now. Okay. Uh, so I'm still working on that. Cameras are high end right now, right? Did you get the movie quality cameras? I think you were talking about that at we one time. We have one camera called the C100, yeah. which is really nice. Um, y- you can switch out the lenses with you know professional quality wow, lenses. That's awesome. Um, so that's really nice. It's made by Canon. We're looking to get another one of those possibly. You got, um, the, you got the remote kit so that you can be out. Yeah, switching have, live or going we have live. The, the roadie live switcher yeah. made by Broadcast Picks. I feel like I'm doing them. Um, this is not marketing here and <laughs> I'm not being paid. But it's just a cool piece of, cool piece of equipment. Them. Maybe if, we can get some money out yeah, of it. Yeah, if, if people want to look it up, uh, see the uh, um, the specs on it. It's, it's really cool. You can plug in f- up to four HD cameras, uh, and it's the size of a small suitcase. You had that at the parade a couple right. weeks ago. So, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, local stations are big on having, like, um, you know, a production truck. Yep. Um, but uh, I feel like that's that's a big operating cost for insurance and all this stuff, uh, maintenance and stuff like that. So when I found the the road, I realized that this is this is a gem. This is something that we could easily bring to any event. Plug in cameras, record, hit record, and and now we're switching live instead of you know having to take all the footage back and edit and sync up all the cameras and right. stuff like that. So uh, for football games, sporting events that we can bring it to. Um, you know, it does require a couple extra uh, people on hand yep. to, to make sure you're you're running it uh, correctly. Like you said, save so much time on editing. Right, but it will save us um, in the long run. Uh, for example, I'm still editing the local music awards. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I That's brought the roadie for that. Now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to do that next year. Uh, but that. I just uh, so there was so many, and that's the thing. Uh, while we're still not settled in, so uh, you know, it's one thing I'd like to stress to people out there. Uh, you know, we're doing everything we can uh, my number one goal when i was hired is content i knew that we needed to start getting as much content on the air as possible yeah um because otherwise you know i could still be setting up the st- studio to this day yeah. and not concentrating on content and just having a bulletin board on the station nobody's going to watch it so no one's going to care right so even when we had limited equipment i i knew that the the uh uh the onus had to be on getting out there and and recording events and getting them on the air. It is nice to switch around and not see the scroll all right. the time. There's a, there's somebody you know. There's always somebody you know on Milford TV, which is really cool. And I hear that out and about. It's like, oh, I saw you on Milford TV. I'm thinking, what did I do recently? Yeah. Living for the weekend yeah. or distracted driving um, or just being at an event or something. Well, you're and a big part of our success, too. I mean, if you weren't, um, you know, the first time I met with you guys, I realized that this was, you know, People listen to MRC and they care about what's on MRC, and I knew that that would be a good, um, you know, um, way to get us uh, market ourselves a little bit and partner with you guys. So, and we're the black sheep of the of the media, you and I, cable access and AM radio. But we are probably the biggest of forms of media in local in a local community. You know, we can get out there and talk to the local community like no one el- else can. Absolutely, and I think this is a really awesome and strange time to be in Milford because you have the radio that people pay right. attention to, and now you have a local TV station. A lot of people too. don't have that. No, no. Um, I mean, just in the surrounding areas. I'm not going to call people out, but I I challenge people to to look at um, their local cable access stations. Yeah and see if there's anything that they actually want to watch 
or turn on the radio and see if there's I mean well obviously they're going to pick up MRC but go outside of this area there's yeah. nothing local I don't think I mean it maybe if you go into Boston obviously you have the colleges with their local radio stations but nothing like this so. I think what Rob is saying is uh, appreciate us a little bit more please sure <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that but also Milford <laughs> is just I've never really come across a community like this it is really unique and it's hard to see that um probably for the Milfordians. I don't know if they appreciate that, but me coming out, you know, growing up in a different town and, and then coming here and, and working in a lot of other different towns, it's a very unique community, so you guys should be proud of it. And it is turning. Um, I think it was stuck for a little while, and it's turning for the better with, with um, groups like Citizens from Milford, and I think people are just taking more care in our future. Sure. Like we got to do something. We got we we can't keep complaining. Everyone wants to complain about their hometown. I mean, but anybody's like that in their hometown. You oh, always yeah. find the negative. Sure. But I think that I, I see a, a change, and I hope it's uh, because of us, and I know it's because of you guys. And what's uh, another great thing about putting on Milford TV is it's not all stale. It's not town meetings. It is, but there's always something entertaining too. So you're covering sports. I mean, just like any good network uh, television station, uh, sports, entertainment, government, there's something for everybody. There really is. uh, That's what I'm really proud of. It's not like, oh, you know, we have uh, the best baseball coverage and that's it. No, we have a lot of other great things that we're covering, too. And I think it just, uh, again, we're just echoing the, the, uh, the, the vibe of Milford itself, so... We're able to cover all these different things and have all these different things on the air because Milford is such a diverse community with a lot of things going on. Yeah. Well, that was fun. I know we talk on Living for the Weekend, but we don't really get to get into it like we just did. So thanks for coming down. Oh, no problem. And then also, well, let's tell people how they can see it. Sure. And the so, channels uh, and talk about the website as well and the live streaming on the website. Right. So Milford TV, you can catch it on cable if you have uh, Comcast or Verizon. On Comcast, we're on channels 8 and 11. On Verizon, we're on 38 and 40. Uh, if you don't have cable you can, and you have your uh, you have internet, you can go to uh, MilfordTV.net, and our channels, our two channels, are streaming live 24/7, right on the front page. Um, and then we also have our YouTube channel, My Milford TV is the channel name, uh, and you can virtually see our entire archive of uh, events that we've covered over the past three years. They're all up there. Uh, we have different playlists. We have playlists for um, uh, sports. Mm-hmm. We have all the sports that we've covered over the, over the years. We have playlists for all the selectmen meetings, finance committee meetings, school committee meetings. So really, it's um, it, there's a, also a um, a nice resource for those 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 uh, governmental meetings yeah. on our YouTube page as well. I think it's a it's a good starting point the YouTube page because then you get to see everything that Milford TV is all about, and then you could jump into the. TV and uh, the internet and all that stuff, but start with YouTube. I think that's a good place yeah, to sure. start. Yeah, sure, and that's also where you'll see our our uh, programming in full quality as yeah. well. Oh, now, too. there's a couple uh, things about that. We don't put the full Milford Informer show on YouTube uh, because it turns over every week, and that would just right. be... Uh, and a lot of the information is very timely, so we'll put special stories, yep. um, the featured stories, uh, sports highlights in that Milford Informer um, playlist. Again, living for the weekend, we'll put special yeah, performances. I appreciate that on there. We won't put the full show, but um, but other um, events that we cover will be up on YouTube in their entirety. Uh, any special event, any meeting, um, a lot of our um, other shows. We also do a show with. Um, the Shine Medicare Group, um, just uh, th- through the Senior Center. Yeah. Uh, we do a show about the trail, the Milford Trail, with yeah. the friends of the Milford uh, Upper Charles Trail. Um, there, I can't even remember all the shows <laughs> that we do. Just you get a whole list YouTube. At, yeah. on the uh, website as well yeah. of uh, programming and yep, the times. You can see our programming guide on, our, on milfordtv.net as well. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you.